The integer class in Java is really a fascinating class because it is one of Java's wrapper classes. And one of the primary purposes of a wrapper class is to take one of Java's primitive data types, which I have listed in the table on the left, byte, short, int, long, char, float, double, and boolean, and convert it into an object. And the object names, or the wrapper class names, are very similar to their primitive names. We can see that byte, short, long, float, double, and boolean, their equivalent is just a capitalized version. So byte becomes capital byte. There are two exceptions to this, int and char. Int becomes integer with a capital I, and char becomes character with a capital C. As I said, wrapper class's primary purpose are to take a primitive and move it into an object. And this is especially important when you get to data structures where they have to hold objects and they can't hold primitives. But I don't want to leave you there with a wrapper class because a wrapper class is more than just a wrapped primitive. It is a class which enables it to have both methods and fields that can be used. So for the video, what I want to do is I want to hone in on the integer wrapper class. And I really could have chosen any of the numeric wrapper classes like byte, short, long, float, or double because they're very similar in their methods and their fields. Or maybe I could have focused on uh, character, which is a really fascinating wrapper class because it has a lot of good and full-bodied methods inside of it. But I'm taking integer as a good representation of these and just showing you there's something more beyond taking a primitive, moving it into an object. So let's go explore this. Now that we're going to take a look at the integer class, let's start with the basics. In order to get there, let's first declare a primitive int, and we're going to assign it to the value of 42. And now, let's create an object integer. We're going to call it object, and we're going to assign it to 123. The way that we would do that is we would simply create it like we would create almost any other object, integer object equals new integer, the name of the class, object name, new, which is allocating memory. The second integer there is the constructor. And we're passing 1, 2, 3, the primitive, and it's actually turning it into an integer object. Now there's a couple ways that you can do this, make this conversion between a primitive and a wrapper. And if we wanted to take the primitive that we first created, 42, and wrap it with the integer object, we could write a statement like this, integer object 2 equals new integer primitive int pass it to the constructor, and that is going to make the conversion between a primitive data type into its wrapper class integer. And so if we were to visually do this, it would look something like there's our primitive 42, and coming up behind it is the integer class wrapping around it. Now that the integer class has been wrapped, let's see what this entitles us to. Now that the primitive 42 has been wrapped inside of the integer class, it is important to see how it fits in terms of other classes that are related to it. And the integer class actually inherits from the number class and the object class. So it's going to get methods from the object class and the number class. And let's see what some of those methods are that are either from the integer class, number class, or object class. The integer class has several methods, but I just wanted to look at a few for the sake of this video. And those are two binary string parseint equals and int value. So to start with, I've created a class called integer102, and I've assigned primitive int to the integer value 42. Then I created an object, object, which takes that primitive value and wraps it with the integer class. So the first method that I want to look at of the integer class is two binary string. And it's representative of a lot of the integer class methods, which allows you to convert integers, which are usually expressed in base 10, into another base. So we would say something like system out print line integer dot two binary string object. And this would output a string output of the binary equivalent or base two equivalent of the integer 42. And the equivalent would be 101010. The next 
method, which is probably one of the most commonly used methods of the integer class, is parseInt. And in order to use it, I've set up two string values, 1, 2, 3, and S2, which references 4, 5, 6. If we were just to take these two values and concatenate them together, or put a plus sign in the middle, they would not add the values. They would, of course, just mush them together, say 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. But what the integer class allows us to do is take those string values and convert them into integers and then add those two numbers together. So we have system out print line integer.parseInt s and then integer.parseInt s2. So instead of concatenation, we get addition and it would be 579, which is 123 plus 456. A really powerful tool if you're just taking in string values and then later on you want to say, oh, this string value I want to use as a numeric value or an integer value. The equals method of the integer class is a fairly simple method which is going to allow us to say, hey, is one integer object equal to another integer object by comparing the values? So first I compare the original object, which has 42 in it, and object 2, which also has 42 in it, it is going to output true because 42 is equivalent to 42. Next, I'm going to compare two different integer objects. One contains 42, the other contains 100, and the result is predictable, false. Equals is a Boolean return method, and we can see the true and false results of how the equals method works with the integer class. Finally, I've saved int value for last. And this is an interesting method because it's going to make a conversion between the primitive value and the object value. And so if you remember up here, what we have done is we have taken a primitive 42 and we have converted it into a wrapper class. But then the question becomes, can we go backwards? Can we take that new wrapper class integer value and convert it back into a primitive data type? And the answer is yes. That's exactly what int value is doing. There isn't going to be any output, but what is going to be happening behind the scenes is it's going to unwrap the integer value and save it as a primitive value. So I think I've shown you a good representation of the methods inside of the integer class. Let's look at the other side of the coin, which of course is the integer class fields. The integer class has a couple fields in it, and one of the most common ones is max value. And if we were to use that in a class like integer 103, we could say something like system out print line integer dot max value. Notice it's all caps because it is a field. And if we were to output that, it's going to give us the highest possible integer value which is around 2 billion. And then its inverse is integer.minValue, and if we were to output that, it would give us the lowest integer value possible, which is approximately negative 2.1 billion. Now you might be asking yourself, why would I use that, or why do I care what that number is? Well, actually it's more commonly used than you would think. One of the most common applications is a program find the lowest or the highest value of a set of numbers or something along those lines. It is usually good programming practice to set the lowest number to the highest value. And you say, wouldn't you want to set the lowest value as the low value? Well, no, because what you're trying to accomplish then is when someone enters a number, if you have the maximum integer value in there, you know that it's either going to be equal to it or it's going to be lower than that number. And so it works as a great temporary value and it ensures that whatever the user puts in or whatever number you're trying to find is going to be lower than that number. And the inverse is true also. If you're looking for a high number or the highest number in a set of values, it works to set it as the lowest value possible that way, any number that is in the data structure that you're looking at or is input from the user is going to be guaranteed either equal to it or higher than it. So min and max, great ways to 
set kind of temporary values that you know are going to be replaced and you want to be replaced. Hey, if you're looking for more information about the integer class, the best place to find it is, of course, the API. Just use your favorite search engine and type in Java integer class. It's going to give you all of the classes that the integer class inherits from, all of its interfaces, its fields. I was only able to cover a few, but it has all of them listed there. Its constructors. I talked about this constructor. Hey, did you know you can put in a string and it'll convert it into an integer? Interesting, huh? has all of its methods, whether they're static or instance, and you can obviously see here that I was not able to cover all of them. I was just able to cover a couple. As I said, a very robust class. So check out the API if you're interested in learning more about the integer class. Wrapping up the integer wrapper class, don't forget, for every primitive data type, there's a corresponding wrapper class. And specifically for int, its wrapper class is integer. The thrust of this video was to show you when an int is converted into an integer, it allows access to the integer class methods and fields. And we showed you a few two binary string parseInt equals int value, max value, and min value. It is extremely important that it takes a primitive and converts it into an object, but it also is important to remind a programmer that it allows a programmer to use it as a class. And just another point to remember is that integer doesn't stand alone by itself. It is inheriting methods from the number class and the object class. So hopefully you've seen in this video that the integer class is a powerful class along with its wrapper brethren and that the importance of going from a primitive to an object is important, but it's also important to see them as their own full robust classes. Thank you so much for watching the video. If you liked the video, please do click like below. If you'd like to see another video like this one, please do subscribe to the channel. Truly, thanks again for watching.